Oh shit, I fucked up now. Fuck. Fuck. What happened? What I happened? uh I didn't have your screen maximized. Now I oh, have okay. it maximized. Try one more time. Yeah, we don't have to sleep. I got a system overload. It's waiting to connect. Turn we got it on the last one. I'm not hearing that. Oh yeah, it's... it wants me to log in again. Shit. Listen <sighs> to That's not good. What? Son of a bitch. There, got it, got it, got it. It's coming through. <laughs> EB. Hey, CW. What's going on, man? Uh, welcome, welcome to the Mission. Just everybody. <laughs> it's been a terrifying week. How was. Uh, we talk about movies, but I just got to get this off my plate. So I haven't watched any movies because I've been having bad dreams. So this one that I had, I was hanging out with Rob, with Rob Halford. That doesn't sound like Bruce. right off the bat like it would be that bad of a dream. Wait for it. Okay. Wait for it. It's coming. And it's going to ruin your day. So, okay, so I go over to his place and, and he's like, let's chill in the basement. I'm like, cool. And he's got this old, like an Electra home, t- like tube style TV, like a big, you know, as big as they could get back in those days. And we're sitting there chilling, watching movies. And it becomes obvious that he's got this dude in his basement. And the only way I can describe it, he's like a seven and a half foot guy, kind of like tiny from house of a thousand corpses. You know what I mean? Like the guy that he's, <laughs> he can't come out and sit with everyone for dinner for a reason, like has to wear us like a leather mask or something. Cause there's, he, there's something messed up with this guy hmm. and I'm sitting there looking at him and he's got like a really common name, like Richard or something like that. But I'm I, like, he, it's clear he's not right. So I'm trying to be super nice to him and, you know, just talk to him and stuff. And, and Rob tells me that if he senses discomfort or danger, he gets really upset. So at one point I'm talking about something and I'm like watching what I'm trying to say. My voice goes up in pitch a bit and he gets up and he gives me this giant hug and he starts squeezing and squeezing and squeezing. And you realize it's like a bow constrictor. If I panic and my pitch goes up more, I'm going to die in Rob Halford's basement. Mm-hmm. So I have to try to calm my voice down. So the dude will gently let me go. And then I woke up from the dream you know, in that moment between where like, you know, it's a dream versus not know it's a dream. And it's Mm -hmm. like, well, of course, everyone knows that about Rob Halford. He's got one of those in his basement and like, I'm the idiot for going over. So next time I go over, I'm just going to hang out in the kitchen and go, Hey Richard, what's up? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to go in that basement again right? because I'm just terrified of this guy. This, I'm not sure if the scary part's the dream or what is it about my brain that makes that dream possible if anyone's watching this and knows rob halford send this off to him i'm pretty sure you get a charge out of it hopefully he's not too offended (laughs) because i love i love priest right i mean you and i've seen priest together Mm -hmm. but that's like enough like at this point i'm not really down for any horror movies for the next little bit i'm taking a break what about you what's been going on in your world well uh, (laughs) that's that's pretty hard to top but because it is, for me, it's try just, topping that. I dare you. It's, it's just standard movie shit, right? You know, when I was young, I, I I'd, I'd watch The Shining at way too young of an age, and then I'd be like, you know, scared to go into the basement, <laughs> yeah. scared of having the lights off. It's like not even, you know, what? It, yeah. It's not even the dark part because you know, once you, once you get into movies where like the ghosts come out during the daytime, then anything's fair game, right? Yeah. So it's just like then right. it's then it's right. just like fear of being, you know, just like anywhere. <laughs> at that point right right right, right. basically you know, yeah like pennywise you know, the clown he comes out 24 7 he's ready to go you know like you watch that uh la la rona shit uh, i've been watching a couple of those and mm-hmm. uh I, I don't even know if the movies are necessarily that scary but the concept is creepy man like holy fuck and i mean that only happens a few times in my life like the ring did that to me when i saw it the shining did that uh-huh. um yeah what aside from other movies that I've seen on Netflix, there's one, and it's not really a horror so much as it is a uh, you know psychological thriller, stalker kind of, and that's called Alone, and that's uh, I don't want to give too much away. So, woman's going out and driving around, and uh, some dudes she realizes some dude's following her and then take it from there right mm-hmm. it turns pretty cool pretty cool film alone and uh nice that's me yeah you know but i'm still scared cool. right like, all right so hey we got some well let's say that's the point is to be scared right? yeah <laughs> however however it gets you there right i mean i had that dream i wasn't like it's not like i was drunk or i was doing drugs or anything it was just yeah. like that's where my head went fair enough and again i was reading stephen king when i was 10 years old so maybe that's part of my problem Mm-hmm. but uh hey talk about something that's not so scary we've got the new 
Empirical Labs plugin, it's not a new plug. It's an update to the arouser compressor, which mm -hmm. has got to be one of my favorite software plugins. So I thought it'd be fun. Why don't we just go through for just to put a video out some of the new features that are here? We down? Oh, yeah. So this is uh, the complaint. version three, right. correct? Version, yeah, this is exactly. version three. They had version two. And I'll just add that I noticed a couple differences. Number one difference that, that's applicable probably to a lot of people is that this, it's still on the iLock system, but it no longer requires the dongle. It's still the iLock right. cloud, so you'll need an internet connection, but you don't need the dongle. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're doing machine-based yep. authorization yet, but that this is still a good step, I think, in the right direction. So, no jacket required. Yeah, you know? I, I agree. I agree. I like um, I like the ones where you can do it all from the computer. So, do you want to dig in on the features? Do you want me to go through them? Yeah, well, yeah. Let's let's. I got your screen here, so let's take a look. All right, so same interface, right? I mean, we've done a video on a browser, so you can just go back in time and look for that if you want a, a walkthrough. But there is some new stuff that could technically make a difference in the sound. I'd say the first one is the inclusion of an opto mode, which the distressor has. Uh, and I think if I remember correctly, it's tied to a ratio, probably 10 to 1. And it's really just a marking on this ratio uh, silk screen here you know so i think opto mode is just written above it but what's cool about this is there's two opto modes one of them models the the classic la2a with the t4 cell i forget which one it is you'd have to check the <clears throat> the forums or the manual but also when you choose it it's like okay look here you've got your settings but if you want this to sound more like a true and uh, a true blue la2a or whatever your favorite opto is there's some settings you need to be cognizant of. So look at the look at these. It's gonna be hard to see. Look at how the different labels change as you click on them. So you click on the A, and you can see the attack time is something like I don't want to say it's eight milliseconds. And then if you click on Opto B, it becomes two and a half. So it changes the suggestions for the attack and release. Now notice it doesn't actually change the attack and release. If you want it to do that for you. Click on Opto A, click the attack guidance, let's call it, and watch the knob. Watch the knob. Boop. It changes to eight milliseconds. Go to Opto B, click it again. Boop. Goes to two and a half. You mm. see? So there's a whole bunch of guidance all over the place. Like you should increase the saturation, which I think the default's like four out of 10. Uh, increase the saturation to seven. Change the. Um, the detector high pass filter to 20 hertz and so on so on so on it goes through the detector side chain eq as well so it's got all of these almost like recommended um recommended settings when you choose the different opto modes so that's part one and we'll have a listen to it in a minute there's also if you don't like 4181 sorry 4161 you can go a little i'm not sure why you'd want this but you can click alternate and you get four one six and a half one seven one ten one i'm not sure if that's meant to model a specific piece of hardware or mm -hmm. what benefit you get from that but there it is you can get some slight variation there and again this may be because they're brown i'm supposing that when you choose opto a or b that you could fuss around with maybe these are more common uh compression ratios on those devices I'm, but i'm guessing here i didn't see anything in the manual yeah. about it. six to 12 minutes so another thing that's new you guys might be familiar if you use this tool that the blend control had an expert mode where you could go in and set the dry level trim as well as the percent mix now there's a feature like that on uh soft clipping where you can make there's two new distinctions you can make one is I want the I want the um, the detector to send the signal to the compressor before clipping, or I want the clipping to happen after. So here again, because it's brown, I'm assuming this might be a recommended setting for the opto modes. And then they've got different suggestions for where you'd set. This is a new control, the second order harmonics. And these are like your duplicates. So 20 becomes 40, then 80, then 160. So it's almost like adding octaves to the, the harmonics. And 
I, the manual says it's subtle. I'm not sure that I necessarily heard it. I don't use the soft clipper in a browser a ton, but there it is. If you want that control, great. And once more, I see brown numbers here. So we can only assume that means that if you're in opto mode, you'd want to click it to get those, you know, almost like expert defaults. Hmm. Uh, the detector side chain is not new, but I think what might be new is the solo mode or the ability to just listen to it so you can hear what the compressor is hearing. So th I think those are all the big ones. Um, why don't we try having to listen to some drums and just see if we can't make it scream, shall we? Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll grab for fun. Let's grab a preset. We'll grab, we'll grab crushing guts and see how this goes with the drum kit. So without, with, So you can immediately hear that that's really softened and splooshed up the snare. You should be able to hear more of the room emerging because we're squishing it pretty heavy. There's 10 dB of gain reduction there. Not a huge ratio, it's three to one, but let's compare now to, let's try opto mode. as you expect out of an opto the release is a little bit longer you're looking at 500 milliseconds there which is pretty lengthy for uh for a release when you're trying to squish stuff as a result you're not going to hear the same amount of real distortion like 1176 type of squish and crush mm -hmm. uh, let's try with eight milliseconds let's try opto b which is a new t4 which has got a much faster attack time and a slightly shorter release. Let's give it a hear. This is Opto A. Doing something different on the snare. Let's try B. Let's see if opening up those uh, second order harmonics does anything. I'm having a hard time hearing it. We might want to do it on something more musical. I'm struggling to hear it. Let's try, let's try uh, switching between pre and post. ton of difference I mean, it, there may be something there but uh i'm struggling to hear it a little bit but i definitely like this opto mode i think it sounds cool one area where i'd want to try i'd want to try that a little more deeply is let's dig into uh, a vocal so i had a podcast vocal that i happened to record this morning let me close this plug open a new one <clears throat> and here again we'll go for one of the presets real quick we'll go for opto or you know what? It's, it was an SM7B, so I have a preset for that. So have a listen to how it sounds with my normal preset. That's hard. When you turn the camera on, there's the sense immediately that you're being watched, that you're being judged. Do I look Switched good enough? Do I sound smart me. enough? All of those things constitute a form of fear. But if you don't confront Whoa. them and choose to do scary things, nice. you don't grow. Smooth. Did you hear a touch of, I mean, there's a touch of a, a volume boost, but it got a lot smoother and it got uh, warmer in the bottom end. Mm -hmm. Probably because first things first with that, the SM7 is a chesty mic and I, I don't have an equalization on it yet. So this 20 hertz um, cutoff for the detector is probably allowing some of that fatness to leak out as opposed to compressing it. So we could test that, but just... I've listen. done hundreds of episodes of podcasts. I'm really comfortable yep. in front of a microphone. But what I'm not comfortable with is putting myself out there on social media. 
So what could I do that's scary? I kind of like different? what a compressor does when you hit it with a lot of bottom end. I like seeing it chew on that bottom end a little bit, but that's a nice warm sound. So I get why we would call that opto. Let's compare without and different. with. That moves the needle forward. Now here's another example. We have to learn as coaches, scrum masters, practitioners, entrepreneurs, leaders, yeah. to ask hard questions. I like that. Let's try. There's so much content beat. out there. And I say this at the beginning of my show, there's so many resources about what you need to do to be at. So that's actually snipping off a little bit of the attack to the point where I wouldn't use that for a, for a vocal maybe, unless it was in a heavy rock mix and you really needed to stabilize it. But I'm digging that sound. Let's, uh, let's fool around with that. Let's see if we can get the second order harmonics to do anything. Be agile. It's the same stuff over and over. Right? What color talking stick should I use in stand-ups? What are the scripts that I need to say during retrospectives to make them go better? Should my team have eight people or six people or 10 people? Eh, maybe not. Maybe, again, maybe on something more musical, we may be able to detect it, something with an actual note. But I do like the addition of this opto because it gives me something that my normal preset, which was a little, um, it was a little more heavy handed, same ratio or lower ratio. Actually, let's just compare. Those are common discussions. We've already had them before. There's less value in repeating those discussions and way more value oh, yeah. to be gained by asking the harder questions. Here's an example. What if you were to go this online is my and normal say, preset? Be doing agile anymore? That's a confronting question. That's a challenging question. With not much of a gain boost, it, it is hitting the compressor a little bit harder, but you'll notice it immediately warms up and it's, it really, um, it, it's, uh, this would be great on a less dense track. I really feel like this would sound good on something where you wanted to let the full quality of the voice shine, which of course is what the opto compressors are arguably famous for. So Eric, what did you use it on? Did you give it a try? Yeah, I did. I mean, even before, I mean, I just say that uh, these new Optimods, it seems like you're getting more gain reduction, uh, and yet it's smoother. Uh, you don't, you're not hearing right. as much. It's, it's that brilliance that Opto can, uh, can achieve in certain situations, and I think this is one of them. Where, right. Uh, so, so for, in terms of what I tried, let me uh, share my screen here. Yeah, I would love to hear that Opto on an acoustic guitar. Probably, I know you got some bass lined up. Oh, that's not good. Not good. That was a great idea because before we started this, of course, he suggested, hey, do you have any acoustic? Let's hear what it can do on acoustic. And I said, yeah, I can. And I went through some, I pulled up some presets and I put an acoustic and I just went through the different presets and hey, lo and behold, the one that seemed best to me in this situation was one of the optos, Opto B new T4. Mm -hmm. So let's just hear the acoustic without. slow up that release just a little bit Gets and give it just a little more attack and maybe hit it a little less hard make that gain up that's still pretty you can see it's pretty flat line mm -hmm. there it's it's clamping down good without Make up a bit more gain with without with yeah, basically a very good compressor. You're hearing a little very bit nice. of flutter, of course, but acoustic is, is sort of mm -hmm. kind of notorious for that. It's actually very hard to find a compressor that won't do that on acoustics. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, again, mm -hmm. that's what I heard immediately. So, of course, the solution to that is to slow things up a bit. So we've got like 532 milliseconds release. That's a pretty slow release. It's mm -hmm. in opto mode. So it's got one of those uh, brown ratios. In this case, mm -hmm. it was 7 to 1 on this particular preset. Quite a bit of saturation. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what... Uh, the expert mode said it was post detector input. Second harmonic, not, not, none of that was really dialed in, just like 0 0.5. It's a little blue. It's here to see if we can spot it, though. Yeah, let's, uh, let's just try it. On, so on something musical, see what happens. It's quite 
this up too. Let's pull this down. Back up. Oh yeah. You hear some top end crystals there? Is that what you're hearing? You hear definitely audible distortion on the top, right? Because mm-hmm. yeah. and, and actually this is probably worth mentioning at this point too. They said even order harmonics, I mean, depending on how you do them, uh, but they're not like this big warm rich fat sound typically those actually the truth that i found is that it's the odd harmonics that kind of sound that way even harmonics are kind of more your almost crackly sizzly fuzz pedally like oh if, if you really crank even harmonics it almost sounds broken right like a rectifier or something would be an example of even harmonics the second order, right? Anyway, let's uh, let's get some drums going on. I don't have much here. I just I fooled around with it because again, I don't. I never bought a Rouser because it had a dongle, but now it doesn't, mm-hmm. and it's pretty good price. Mm-hmm. At, I believe one twenty nine mm-hmm. on sale, which is a considerable amount yeah. off. It's yeah. a no brainer. So yeah, that's what I'm I'm starting to think I'm, because I play around with this. Like this is a good compressor. This is a really good compressor. Oh yeah, you know, and I have yeah. used the the distressors too. So I mean, the only thing really keeping mm-hmm. me from it was just kind of me not wanting to go down the dongle route, but. Uh, that's no yeah, longer yeah, yeah. a uh, consideration. So let's hear some drums and let's hear without and then with and what I've dialed in. Without. With. <laughs> nice. 20 decibels of gain reduction. I mean, it's moving the hi-hats, right? <laughs> it is. It's, it's it's taking the timing out of the hi-hats. But I like the way it emphasizes the shells. Like, I like that sound. Those are those were nicely mic'd drums. Yeah, exactly. And uh, see, yeah. that uh, what this is, this is one right here is one file, where it's just the faders up mix of the drums. So that would include all the, the close right. pieces and the overheads yep, yep. with the cymbals and also the room sounds. But what I've also done mm-hmm. is I've gone and separated it out. I don't know if you can see here because... But there's two tracks on this next example. Same example, mm-hmm. except that now the the direct pieces, the close mics have been separated out. So you've got one track with the okay. close mics, and the other track has the overheads and the uh, and the rooms. So what you'll hear okay, is cool. that, that the cymbals won't be doing that anymore. We probably hear less room mm-hmm. too, though, because I didn't. Uh, so what are you, are you what are you compressing the uh, just the closes? Just the close, close mics. Yeah. yeah, and we'll play that, and then probably that room level will need to come up a little bit. But I'll do that as we're playing it. Without. With. And that's actually because that's quite a bit louder now. It's got a bit of room. You can start to bring up the overheads maybe in the rooms. So you're getting a similar sound, but the cymbals aren't doing that thing anymore because you kept them out of the compression path, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. It's always something to keep in mind. If you, just for fun, yeah. if, if you bring that attack down, can you get it sort of DBX kind of popping, you know, that, that, that real clicky kind of sound that you can get? I've actually never tried it on a snare. See where it goes. Yeah, let's try that. So now with the DBX, uh, the DBX has that punch because, to, you know, the attack is not instantaneous. The DBX has that, mm-hmm. I would say, I don't know, it's probably 10 milliseconds or more. Mm-hmm. So the more that you, you, you crank down on the DBX, uh, the more of that pop gets through. So I would guess let's start with the attack at zero and, and go for a pretty quick release, even like, say, maybe 120 milliseconds and really mm-hmm. crank into it. You can see I got cranked up here. So let's back that off and yep. then ease into it and let's just hear what we mm-hmm. get and then once we get a really solid level of compression going well, let's raise that attack and see if we can if we can pull out that kind of dbx pop mm-hmm. already at 18 decibels of gain reduction let's keep go for even more there we go that's starting to hit 30 now our time mm-hmm. Now let's crank the attack up a little bit. Let's start to let some of that pop through. Let's make the release just a little slower, but not too much. Hear that? And actually, let's 
some more low end back into the detector because I think that's letting a lot of. There we go. Starting to get into TBX territory from what I'm used to. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, not as clicky, but it's definitely uh, it changed the tone of the snare. And for fun, let's hear the uh, let's hear the harmonics on there. Oh yeah. See if you can crank that. those. See if it does anything. I couldn't hear it when I was playing with my drum track. But. Let's see what happens. Right now there isn't any really of the seconds, so let's add it to them. Right. I hear the distortion now. character of this you can hear it a little more when you've got it cranked what it's do what the second harmonic's doing yeah a little bit so there's a zero i'm gonna turn it up all the way hear it on the cymbals it's a little more squelchy it's good stuff it's very subtle right i mean yeah cause, oh, no i could hear it more on the hi-hats than on any other part of the kit but it's you can see that it's there it's just not particularly it doesn't jump out at you yeah i think that they've been pretty nice. conservative with the second uh, order harmonics here right you talking to me you talking to me i'm the only one here a base example i guess we could take a quick Sure, let's do it. Two seconds on and see. And I, what are they? I put, pulled up the bass enhancer preset. So let's play that and Ooh. see what we've got. Mm -hmm. This is without. Mm -hmm. With. Mm. Without. This is the preset. I didn't touch it at all. Yeah. With. I was bringing a lot of nice to that low end, almost sub thump. It's a bit of evening. Let's see what if we really were to dig into it. I feel like the saturator might be bringing out some of the, the low mids in it. You can hear, I noticed the pick attack or so the finger attack, excuse me, mm -hmm. just seemed a little brighter and a little sharper. So I wonder if maybe it's that, the fact that the saturation's at like 85% there, mm -hmm. maybe that's why. It probably is helping a lot. Let's but I really like what it did to it. Do you want to hear without the saturation and then I'll start bringing it yeah, in let's and we'll it. see what let's it does. Do it. Sure. Here's no saturation, but still quite a lot of compression. off the finger we can make a fart out a little bit actually let's check out this yeah i was hearing something too. i was hearing something a little bit higher so i wonder if it was something else but i but it you can hear it, the saturation working for sure oh wow does it that just kind of muffled it out eh? it's a great control because it can really yeah It almost feels like it's been gain matched, you know, for the for the gain match fans out there. Yeah, we were saying that in our reviews of both the little uh, the big freak and the arouser that it didn't, you know, cranking up the saturation didn't bring up the volume. So sometimes it really wasn't satisfying, especially on the big freak. But this is still a good saturator. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not satisfying maybe only because it's not getting louder in the way that you know a guitar pedal would, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, I mean, really, we've covered, I think, all the big stuff, all the new stuff. And I really like, to me, the Shining. And this is a free update, by the way. So this, if you already have it, it's not going to cost you anything. Cool. So the the addition of the opto controls allow you to get that more vintage um, opto vibe, which is something that this tool has never done before. Present on the Distressor, not present in this tool. And uh, I like it. I can't wait till they make a plug-in version of the Fatso. 
Mm -hmm. That was a great toy. I hope I hope that that's coming. I hope it's coming. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. People keep well. When the the big freak came out, everyone was like, "Is this the Fatso? Is the Fatso coming?" <laughs> um, but I don't know. Maybe they have to change the name of it. May change the name of it first. They had to change Gear Sluts. It's now what's it called? Gear Town. Gear Space. I was I was really close. Yeah. No, and that's <laughs> okay. uh, next month, right? That it's going to be. They're going to be flipping over. I think so. Yeah. Almost reminds me of MySpace in a way, right? Which is kind of retro and throwback, True. right? Very if retro. People yeah. want to get that yeah. old wave sound, right? I want Q10. I want the yeah. first rendition yeah, of it. Renaissance uh, Vox or something. Which, yeah. by the way, there's still yeah. great plugins. <laughs> some things they, some of the there's best. some things they got right, like 15 years, yep. ago, 20 years ago, they got it right. I agree, and it's still great. Mm -hmm. So there yeah. you go. <laughs> well hey this is a good yeah. uh, this was a good one it's um I, it's hard to find yeah. fault with this one i like this tool this is on anytime i have a dense mix or a rock mix i'm i'm reaching for this because it does the squishing that you hope a compressor will do for you and uh, it never really disappoints and it sounds hot like it's got a cool rock and roll sound to it so i reach for this quite often i was already a fan and now it's just gotten better i mean it's not going to necessarily turn you into rob halford overnight but you know so I don't understand why Richard, yeah. how Richard got in the house. Was he, was he abandoned somewhere? Is it like a, a project of Rob's? Mm. I just want to talk to Rob about it now. And I mean, like, there's uh, tons of there, tons of therapy that needs to happen in here. It's, I don't mean yeah. to make this your problem, but yeah. we, we've talked about this before. If you don't have the Rob Halford biography that it came out like less than a year ago, get the audio book because just to have him tell his story to you is fabulous. It's a, what a great read. You've got to check that book out. Oh, yeah. So I don't mean to go off course there, but, but, uh, grab the trial or grab the plugin, check it out. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to tag the empirical labs people in this video or not, because I feel like once they hear this, the story of Richard in the basement, I'm, I'm they're probably going to disavow themselves of the mixer cyst. They that's make okay. it that far, right? <laughs> if you've, hey, if, if, they you've, make it if, that if far. anyone's made it this far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Right, if so. you're still listening, <laughs> I've, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for being you know, fans though. Yeah honestly yeah, appreciate yeah, it yeah. appreciate you guys yeah thank you very much you're, all right should we roll individual <laughs> yeah, I, I hope we yeah, never meet thanks for checking us out <laughs> well that's not, right. not in a dark alley not alone we're gonna meet in public oh. it'll be in a public space i'm bringing richard <laughs> that's right <laughs> i'm bringing richard <laughs> <laughs> let's do lunch <laughs> yes that's right. right yeah okay rock and roll good to see you guys thank you for tuning into the mixer sis we'll catch you next time dance, 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 dance.